So we've all heard of the story about Bastille and the violent dictator Napoleon. However, in this episode, we're going to take you back to the first moments of the French Revolution, the tennis court oath, on June 20th, 1789. I like tennis just as much as the next person, but the tennis court oath was more than just your basic math. Let us explain to you the history of the Third Estate and why it broke off. The French government was made up of the monarchy, the parliament, and the Estates General. The Estates General was first established in the 13th century to act as a counseling body for the monarchy. The Estates General was a tricameral system that was meant to represent all the people of France. The first estate was the clergyman, which made up 1% of the overall population. The second estate was the nobility, which made up 2% of the population. And the third estate was the communes, or everyone else which made up 97% of the population. This setup allowed for the clergy and the nobility, only 3% of the population, to be able to outvote the third estate, creating tension between the states over conflicts of interest, such as, such as taxation. But in 1614, the entire estates general was dismissed by Henry XIV to expand his absolute power, and were not invited to return until 1788. Mm. Facing a financial, social, and political crisis, Louis XVI called the Estates General back into session in 1788 in order to seek aid in moving the country forward. However, conflict immediately arose. The Third Estate constantly butted heads with the First and Second Estate on a penumbra of issues, including the right to vote by population size rather than social order or elitism. This issue was heightened by the doubling of the Third, which doubled the number of the Third Estate's members meaning that if voting by population was approved, the Third Estate could actually dominate the Estates General and fully represent the French people. In fact, this problem created quite a rift between the Third Estate and the monarchy. Louis XVI favored the traditional ways and dismissed the Third Estate's request to alter the voting system. Um, on June 17th, the Third Estate declared itself the National Assembly and invited the other estates to join them. Few did. Then, on June 20th, the Third Estates arrive at their usual meeting place to discover that they had been locked out. While no one truly knows why and who locked them out, speculations could be made that it was punishment for their okay. speaking out. This is where the tennis court comes into play. Mm -hmm. Oh mon dieu! We're locked out! I know! We'll meet at the nearby tennis court as the Third Estate. And officially establish ourselves as the new National Assembly under the new oak. This is the oath taken by the National Assembly that day on the tennis court. The National Assembly, considering that it has been called to establish the constitution of the realm to bring about the regeneration of public order and to maintain the true principles of monarchy, nothing may prevent it from continuing its deliberations in any place it is forced to establish itself. And finally, the National Assembly exists wherever its members are gathered decrees that all members of this assembly immediately take a solemn oath to never separate and to reassemble whenever circumstances require until the constitution of the realm is established and fixed upon solid foundations, and that said oath, having been sworn, all members and each one individually confirm this unwavering resolution with his signature. This oath, which claimed that they would stop at nothing to create a new constitution, was the first moment of the French Revolution. While they did not have plans to completely obliterate the monarchy, they did wish to lessen the power of the monarchy and the nobility. The outcome of the tennis court oath fulfilled the visions and wishes of Abbasier that he expressed in his essay, What is the Third Estate? My name is Abbasier, and you may ask, what is the Third Estate? It is the whole. It is everything. But in everything, shackled and oppressed, nothing can succeed without it. But everything would be infinitely better without the first and second estate. So, like Abyssia, we're glad to see the third estate break off to establish themselves as a national assembly. They recognize that this brave decision set the revolution in motion. However, others, like Edmund Burke, would have been disappointed in the third estate's choice because he feared that the revolution was destroying French society. The tennis court oath was truly like no other. It marked one of the first occurrences of the lower class attempting to make the government work in conjunction with the common people. Not to mention, it essentially declared the monarchy to not be absolute, setting the tone for the coming revolution. Their creation, the National Assembly, emerged as the first government of the French Revolution. And the revolution begins!